I'm Hema Ranki Sood, and I want to invite you to stay tuned to CNC3. Join us for a very special episode of She Said So. We'll be speaking with some of the candidates and the delegates, the young women who are all vying for the crown of Miss World Trinidad and Tobago. Now, we're having a special Mother's Day edition, so you want to definitely stay tuned. We're going to find out more about these young women, but also their relationships with their mothers, how it shaped them, and how their mothers cheerleading them in this new chapter of life. Join us on CNC3 this Wednesday, 8.05 p.m., Fridays at 8 p.m., and Saturdays at 12 p.m. She Says So, brought to you by SNS Passage Supermarket and TheBestToys.com. She's unstoppable, she's got the power to break the chains and make it louder. She says no. I want you guys, if you're listening and hearing me right now, to understand and remember that you are so worthy. You're all capable and you all have something unique. So just have fun, give it your all, and you have my support, and Trinidad and Tobago is ready to support you as well. So let's get ready to invite these incredible young women to the stage. If you are you say you are a superstar, Well, by that video, I'm almost certain that you would have realized something big is happening on this edition of She Says So. It's our special Mother's Day edition. And on today's show, we will be introducing you to some of the candidates who will be vying for the Miss World Trinidad and Tobago 2024 crown. We're going to be speaking with these young women to find out about their journey as well as their relationships with their mothers. It's our Mother's Day edition. Good day, ladies. Hi, Hema. Thank you for having us today. I am Miss Tobago, Renessa Ortiz, and it's such a great opportunity to be on set with you. Hi, Hema. Pleasure to be here. I am Kirsten Emanuel, Miss Coover in the Miss World 2024 pageant. Well, thank you for joining us. And I know this is a special Mother's Day edition. So, Renessa, let me start with you. In the brief, you described your mother as a foundation, an advisor through your life's challenges. Can you share some specific moments where your mother's advice or that rock that she provides really sheltered you? A lot of young women usually go through breakups or hardships in their lives. And I believe having your mom be your bedrock and your foundation actually helps you. My mom has been my rock and my advisor through a really difficult time. She would have provided me with the support and guidance I needed to navigate that challenging moment in my life. Now, Kristen, you have described your mother as the backbone in your life, that she's your unwavering support system. And I would ask you the same thing. How has that sort of worked in your life? Give me an example about that. It has led me to be very free-spirited in all my decisions. I was able to change career paths multiple times with my mom's support. Now, when you say multiple times, I always thought I held a, a, a trophy for that. But give me an example. What did you change from? What did she tell you? What was the advice? Uh, originally, I was going to follow in my father's footsteps of being a doctor. Then I wanted to do law. And then I did software engineering because I was very inspired by Tony Stark, Iron Man. <laughs> my mom loved that for me. And after graduating, I wanted to do art. I wanted to pursue art as a career. And I did 3D animation and 2D animation. And my mom supported me in all of that. At no point did she say, OK, you have to make up your mind and stop changing. No, my mother wants me to be free spirited. She wants me to blossom into whatever it is that I want to do. And I love that. And I appreciate that so much. Now, Renata, you also an entrepreneur. You created a fashion startup. Yes. Tell me about you having that conversation as a young woman to say to your mother in particular, I want to open a business. To be very honest, my mom was not a fan of that. She actually had her mindset on me going to medical school. I actually told her. I wanted to become a dermatologist, but during COVID, there was a lot of time to sit back and really reflect. And I decided that I'd start a business, something that I'm passionate about. I actually did clothing and textiles as a subject in high school, and I did some courses thereafter. And through seeing my progress, through seeing the work I've done and the person's lives that I've impacted, she came on board. And she's good now. She's good now. She's actually on board and she's very active in my pieces. Now, Kristen, your fun fact was that your mom loves to cook and create new recipes. Loves to cook. Do you like to cook? I love to eat my mom's food. Does she teach you to cook? Do you share moments in the kitchen? Yes. Um, a fun memory that I have, she was going to make us 
lunch for my sister, my dad, and I. And she made cuckoo. And I'm not a fan of cuckoo, but we sat together and she taught me how to make cuckoo with the promessa and such. And that was the sweetest cuckoo I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> well, maybe I should learn a thing or two as you well. Learn. You know, yeah. as a visionary artist, you're also an animator. Tell me a little bit about how you said your mother supported your career, your career goals. How does she, how does she influence or your upbringing influence what you do now? Well, when I wrote my animated series, Mokogo, um, a lot of the inspiration came from growing up with my mom and her family in Kumuto. And the stories, the folklore stories, the trips to Maracas, the trips to Mayaru, all that coupled with my security that my mom would have my back in whatever it is that I wish to write about and share with the world it blossomed into that animated series and Anime Carib really liked that and so did the rest of Trinidad and the UK and that Did you share the story with her before you took it out to the public? I did actually. I shared the first draft uh, before Mokogo became Mokogo. It was going to be something completely different, uh, very folklore oriented only. And uh, I shared that with my mom and she really supported me in, in that. And that drove me more during COVID. And that story blossomed. And now it's a lot more than just folklore. It is about Trinidad. It's, it is about following your passions. It is about loving your family. It's so much more. When you told her you wanted to enter the Miss World competition, what was that? What was her reaction? My mom said something that I did not anticipate. Um, she said, Kirsten, I always knew you were going to do something like this. Since you were small, I knew you were going to be a princess. And I love my mom for that. She, she has been supporting me in things that I didn't even know of. Vanessa, I'm going to ask you the same thing because you're an entrepreneur, wanted to be a doctor. You started your own business, community activism as well. And then you said to your mother, I want to take a shot at this Miss World title. How did that conversation go? No one knew about me entering the pageant until the broadcast was done in Tobago for the Miss Tobago Beauty Pageant. And that's when I told them about it because my family is very spiritual. I grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist home and participating in events such as this usually isn't something that's synonymous with the religion. But they were very supportive. They came on board. They were all very hands-on in my journey from Tobago here in, and as well in Trinidad. Were you afraid that your mother would frown on this choice or not support you? I was not afraid of her. I was more afraid of my grandparents. She would actually be a part of it because she's actually the one who told me I should try modeling when I was in sixth form. And she religiously took me to all of these sessions. So I knew I didn't have anything to worry about. What do you want to say to your mother on this Mother's Day? Thank you, mommy, for never leaving me behind, for always holding me up, for always being there when I needed a shoulder to cry on. Thank you. Chris, let me ask you the same thing. If you had to speak to your mother right now, what would you tell her? Mom, you are so strong. You are so resilient. You are so kind. You are so compassionate. Thank you for instilling those values in me. And thank you for always being my rock. Well, ladies, thanks so much for sharing your stories. We're speaking to the delegates of the Miss World Trinidad and Tobago 2024 delegation. Uh, they're all vying for this title. And this is our special Mother's Day edition on She Says So. We take a short break. When we come back, we will continue to introduce you to all of the lovely ladies who will, one of them, will be definitely represented. The best for your baby is at thebeststores.com. From the best strollers, car seats, baby carriers, high chairs, booster seats, rockers, jumpers and bouncers, walkers, baby blankets, feeding accessories, and bathtubs. This doesn't store at first floor Movie Town Porters Bain, Forces Flagship, McBean, Eastgate Small Trend City, or shop online now. And remember, we have the best for your baby at the best prices. Welcome back to Dad and Tobago. This is a special edition of She Says So. It's our Mother's Day special, our Mother's Day edition. And we're going to continue conversations with our Miss World Dad and Tobago 2024 delegates. We're introducing you to these lovely young ladies and finding out a little more about who they really are. Hello, ladies. Hi, thank you so much for having us here today. So I'm Jordan Steele, I'm 23 years old. I'm, rep I'm representing Gulview in the Miss World Trinidad and Tobago 2024 competition. 
Hi, Toronto Tobago. My name is Beyonce Bernard. I'm 20 years old, Miss Sun Valley, and I'm very excited to be here today, Hema. Well, thank you for joining us. And Jordan, let me start with you. Um, you have had a very positive experience with, and you were very open about your co-parenting. Mm -hmm. uh, so you had mother, stepmother, and you enjoyed, seemed to enjoy the best of both worlds. A lot of people will not understand that because there always is something seemingly acrimonious mm -hmm. or I don't want to use the word nefarious, but there's always like this ominous statement when you say that, but yours has been different. I definitely didn't have that typical divorced parents lifestyle. So although I was a child of divorce, my upbringing was definitely enriched by the strong relationship that I share with both my mom and my stepmom. You know, so growing up, it was double the love, double the support, double the guidance. I mean, it also came with double the unwarranted opinions, double the unwarranted <laughs> lectures. But, you know, it definitely has been the best of both worlds. And I'd say that, you know, I'm so fortunate to have this experience with both my mom and my stepmom and have such a great relationship with both of them. It definitely has changed my outlook on children out of divorce. And, you know, something ca positive can come out of it. You know, speaking about both your mom and your stepmom, you, say, you speak about them with so much love. What advice did they give you coming into this competition? Let me ask you from both perspectives. Okay, so they both have been super influential in my journey to the pageant. So my stepmom has always been behind me, rooting for me to enter the pageant, and she's so excited now to be my stepmomager. <laughs> <laughs> my mom has also been there encouraging me, guiding me every step of the way. Anything I need, she'd go out her way to get it for me. Um, she's so excited to attend all the events, dress up, do her hair, do her makeup. So it's been really lovely so far. So you have double the love there. I do have double the love. <laughs> Beyonce, let me ask you, you have described your relationship with your mother as dependable mm -hmm. and nurturing. Tell me a little bit about that. What does it mean to you? And maybe you can give us a specific example. Sure. As independent as I may be, my mom is always there as a shoulder for me to lean on. No matter what I do, what I pursue, what it is I want to achieve, my mom is just there lending a hand, lending her support. Even this morning, I was getting ready. I was doing my hair, I was doing my makeup. She's packing my bag. She's helping me get breakfast. She's making sure I get water. Like as independent as I am, she's always there making sure that I get the best, that I do my best. Now, Jordan, you mentioned your mother's career as an event planner, mm -hmm. and also your stepmother is a dedicated social worker. How have, has they, they, you talk about the influence, but obviously they've both impacted you as a person. Tell me, how does that happen? So growing up, I've always been obsessed by whatever my mom's doing, right? So growing up, she's been doing events, whether it was birthday parties, weddings. I've always been by her side, following behind. And I think I definitely got my sense for creativity from her. Um, my more fondest memory with my mom being an event planner would definitely be helping her plan her own wedding in 2018 to my stepdad. You know, it was such a blast being part of something that's so special to her. It was definitely very rewarding for me to be a part of that. Um, similarly, my stepmom, as you mentioned, she's a dedicated social worker for the Ministry of Education. Just last September, I graduated from the University of the West Indies with a degree in linguistics and speech language pathology. And my Beauty with a Purpose actually revolves around advocating for the special needs community. Did you, when you decided that this is what you wanted to do with the Beauty with a Purpose, did you speak to both your mom and your stepmom about it to shape this project? I did, and I definitely said, Jordan, that's so you, go for it. Because I've always been passionate about wanting to help others and make a positive change in the world around us. Now, Beyonce, I know that you are the founder and CEO of the Amulet Journal, yes. an NGO. Tell us a little bit about that. So I founded the Amia Journal back in 2022 when I decided to pursue occupational health and safety at the Cipriani College of Labor. One thing that I really noticed is that period poverty is a very prominent issue in Trans Tobago. And I spoke to my mom about it. I spoke to her the things that I've experienced, the things that I've seen, and that I really want to get the message out there of why it's such a big issue in our country today. Vance, you also mentioned that your mother is that push that you always need, yeah. a supportive push. Tell me about what is a supportive push, because I, I, I hope that I can learn to be a supportive pushing mother. <laughs> So one thing that my mom always says is admit adversity, you rise stronger. So no matter what it is that you're facing, what challenges you may be going through at times in life, always rise the best that you can be and always do better than you thought you could have done. That's the inspirational push that she has on me every day, my little motivation to get my morning started. Did you have ever moments where you felt your mother was disappointed with you? I have, but she's always reminding me that no matter if I fail, no matter if I've done something against her wishes, she's, she's always going to love me. She's always going to be there for me. She's always going to support me no matter what. What, is your, what would you like to say to your mom on this Mother's mm -hmm. Day edition? 
I would say thank you, mom, for the sacrifices that you have made for me. Thank you for your resilience and strength. Mm -hmm. And thank you to every mother out there who's doing the same for their children. Jordan, you'll have two special messages to yep. give. So tell me what is your Mother's Day a greeting? Um, I just want to say that I'm immensely grateful for both my mom and my stepmom's presence in my life. I mean, their unwavering support, their dedication to my upbringing, it certainly has been very influential in my life. And I mean, although we have a very hectic agenda this year, I'm pretty sure we'd still make Mother's Day a priority. You what know? do you plan to do for Mother's Day? You know, considering, are there <laughs> traditions that you do? Um, I mean, this year is probably going to be a little bit different, but I mean, whether it's a heartfelt message, a thoughtful gift, I mean, it's quality time. I definitely make the effort. I mean, I usually visit my grannies as well because I think it's very important to, you know, make the people who have molded us feel very important and appreciated on this special day. So I look forward to celebrating Mother's Day with them. Yeah. Well, ladies, thank you so much, Trinidad and Tobago. We continue to have our conversations with some of the delegates who are vying for the crown. We're finding about finding out more about their relationships with their mothers and how it shaped them. And also, to me, that maybe you can learn a thing or two about not just the co-parenting arrangement, but also how to be a positive push in your child's life. Stay with us. This is another episode of She Said So. Are you looking for a customizable studio space with green and white screen cyclorama and professional production equipment to carry out your next big project? SGP Studios is the perfect fit for you. TNT's largest studio space with an overhead lighting grid and sound treated. Perfect for television commercials, music videos, television programs, social media content, and film production. We also have a wide range of production equipment available for rental. You can choose from a selection of Netflix approved cameras, modern lighting equipment, professional audio gear, 40 foot and 20 foot cranes, gimbals, drones, lenses, action cameras and more, all at competitive prices. Whether you need a high-end cinema camera for feature film shoot, specialized lighting equipment for a music video or audio gear for a podcast, we've got you covered. And with our easy online booking system, you can reserve the gear you need in just a few clicks. Check us out online at sgpstudios.com. She's unstoppable. She's got the power. Welcome back, Trinidad and Tobago. We are continuing our conversations with the Miss World Trinidad and Tobago 2024 delegates. It is our special Mother's Day segment, or Mother's Day edition of She Said So. Now, Jordan is still here, but we do have another delegate. Hi. Hey, Hi. Mom. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, that's great. I'm Tasli Homo, Miss Aruka. Now, Tasli is a very unique name. Tell me a little bit about the origins of this name. Ah. Uh, well, my mom doesn't usually name her kids until she sees them. So when I was born, it was both me and my brother. My dad got to name a son and my mom got to name a daughter. And she decided to name me Tesli because she said God told her. That's it. Well, that's a nice conversation breaker, <laughs> a conversation introduction there, icebreaker. Um, you know, Tesli, when I read your bio, you said that your mother would always say it's not about what you like but about what you have to do that's a pretty strong strong motto to carry through in life tell me a little bit about when you've actually used this i don't like what i'm doing but i just have to do it honestly there were a lot of moments where i didn't like what i was doing and i had to do it for instance with school after form five i didn't want to continue school but she said again it's not what you like it's what you have to do so sometimes in life you need to do what is necessary in order to grow and be a better person. So I was able to do my form six or six form and then continue again to university. And after that, I said I was finished, but I still continued again to do my master's. And your, did you say to your mom, I don't want to go to school anymore? Of course, <laughs> of course. After form five, I was done. And then form six, I said I was done. UE, I was done. And I still continue. And we still persevere. Yes. <laughs> Atasli, you know, I wanted to ask you about your, as a talented musician, where did all of that talent come from, your mom or your dad? Of course, my mom. <laughs> She's an incredible singer and musician. So she plays the lead guitar for our parang band as it's well. It's a family band, Yes, right? it is. So she plays the lead guitar and she's the lead vocalist. So she introduced me to my love of music. She started me learning guitar first, and then I decided I want to start piano, then violin, then pan, and it just spiraled from there. I should ask what you don't play. Um, <laughs> but you know, that 
it's a family band, right? Is yes, there a is. lot of pressure that comes with that? How, how does your mother, because you're part of a twin as well. Yes. So how does your mother kind of say, we're all talented, even if somebody may be a little bit <laughs> She says it. <laughs> <laughs> Some tough love there. Um, you know, I wanted to ask Jordan about your Beauty with a Purpose project. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that you hold very close to your heart. And was Did your maternal influences have a part to play in this? So my mom's friend, she's the head of the Support Autism TT group. And when I was in Form 6, she's like, Jordan, just come, just go volunteer, right? Go help out. And I did. And that day, I would say... It was life changing, you know, hearing the stories from these parents who have children with autism, hearing the challenges that they face, it definitely changed me and that was the driving force behind what I wanted to pursue. I wanted to do something that was fulfilling, something that actually makes a difference. So that's why I pursued my degree in linguistics and speech language pathology and I actually hope to pursue my masters in occupational therapy soon. So I would say that my beauty the purpose definitely stemmed from that. You know, it's very important to advocate for those who don't have a voice, advocate for the voiceless. And I think that my Beauty the Purpose is going to be something really great to look out for. Now, you said it started with you volunteering. Was there any hesitation on your part? Or did you think your mother, your stepmother knew this is why I want to do this? I don't think it was intentional, you know. I think she was just like, Jordan, just go help out, go try something. And it just, it just worked. Was she at that moment, I know we've spoken about it, when you said, this is what I want to do, my beauty and a pur with a purpose, do you think there was an extra beam of pride in her at that moment? Yeah, definitely. I would say that they were definitely very proud. It was something that was fulfilling to me. And I mean, they're just happy that I'm doing something that I like, something that I enjoy. Now, let me ask you a little bit, uh, Tessaly, your mother's dedication, she's a health worker as well. So tell me how that has influenced, you know, your decision to be of service to others. Mm. Well... Uh, our family business is a medical company slash massage therapy. Uh, so initially, I wanted to become a doctor. However, at Form 6, I was introduced to environmental science, which I love. So I decided to pursue my biology and environmental science undergrad anyway. After I failed one exam by 0.99999%, I was so distraught and she decided to give me a pick-me-up take me out to dinner and just just reassure me, encourage me, and just give me back that confidence I really needed. Because honestly, in the beginning, I, I didn't think I would be able to go into the medical field because I thought it would be too difficult. So after I finished my first degree, I decided to push ahead and continue with, well, go into biotechnology. Now that's a really remarkable story. You know, you've described your mother as multitasker and uh, an it's basically excelling at every role that she has. Is that a lot of pressure that you face uh, to, to live up to her, her the standards that she's set? Mm. Honestly, I have never felt any type of pressure, mainly because I think she instilled in all of our children that we shouldn't compare ourselves to others. The only person you should compare yourself is your, the only person you should compare your, yourself to is your past self. So who I was yesterday, that's the only person I'm comparing myself to. When you know you, when you describe your your mother and your stepmother, they also carry a lot of roles. They seem to juggle a lot. Um, does that sometimes amaze you? Thinking, how do they get it done? It does amaze me. You know, I feel like there are only so many hours of the day, and somehow they seem to make everything happen, make everything work. So, I mean, it's really inspirational. You know, I want to be able to do everything I want to do. <laughs> you know, there are many. Um, you all, you obviously have been very blessed in that dynamic, and you started your introduction saying that your experience in co-parenting is probably mm -hmm. one that you speak of very highly. What advice would you have for people who are new in this situation? I would say, you know, don't let the typical stereotypes of a divorced family be all that you know, you know. You never know what's going to happen, you know. Like for me, I had a very positive upbringing enriched with so much love. It definitely was, I was very fortunate, you know, so... So hopefully we can learn from your example. Tessie, <laughs> I know we asked you on this before, but what would you say to your mother on this Mother's Day? Oh, <laughs> I would say I love you, mommy. And thank you so much for bringing me here today. You have always been a pillar of support, love, and encouragement. And I appreciate you so much. 
Well, ladies, thank you very, very much for sharing a little bit of your story, and we wish you all the best in the rest of the competition. <laughs> uh, this is another episode of She Says So. This is our special Mother's Day edition. <laughs> I'm Hema Ramki, so I want to encourage you to stay tuned to CNC3, where we will continue to have more conversations with an, a number of the delegates of this competition, but uh, stay tuned for another episode. <laughs> Taking control She's gonna rise up She's gonna make you know She Says So was brought to you by SNS Passage Supermarket and TheBestToys.com.